31, welcome to example 11. So let's read through this. It says the table gives U.S. coal consumption in quadrillions of British thermal units or quads for several years. The data can be modeled by this function. So it looks like f of t is equal to 24.92 ln t minus 93.31 as long as t is greater than or equal to 80. And t is the number of years after 1900 and f of t is in quads. All right, so it looks like there's my base here. I'm gonna take note of that. And if the years I started keeping track of coal consumption is 1980, that's why I have this domain cutoff of t has to be greater than or equal to 80. Because we're saying we only know this information as long as t is greater than or equal to 80. So it looks like as years are increasing, it looks like my coal consumption is also increasing. And I gave you this logarithmic model. And I call it a logarithmic model because it is a model. It's an equation. It's going to model this data. And it's got a natural log in it. Now, once we get towards the next couple of sections, specifically section 6.8, you will come up with these models on your own. You'll plug this number into your calculator. You'll do logarithmic regression, right? And we've done quadratic and cubic and linear. We'll do logarithmic regression, and then we'll get that model. So your calculator can give you this model. I just happen to do it for you in this case. All right, it says approximately what amount of coal was consumed in the U.S. in 1998 how does this figure compare to the actual figure of 21.66 quads? All right, so what I want to do is I see 1998. That's a time value, a year. So I want to plug that into my model and see what I predicted the coal consumption to be in 1998. And then I'm going to actually see how close I was to the actual number. Because now that 1998 is passed, we can see, hey, how good was this model doing? Was I close? Was I far away? Did I overestimate? Did I underestimate? So let's see what we got here. Now, if we're talking about 1998, I don't want to plug 1998 in for t because that's not how this model was set up. t is the number of years after 1900. So if you ever want to find your t value and you have a base here, take your current value and subtract out your base value and you're gonna find out the t value. All right, so what I really want to do is I wanna plug 98 in here. So let's see what f of 98 would be. It looks like I would have 24.92 ln of 98 minus 93.31. All right, let's see what we got when I plug that on my calculator. I would have 24.92 ln of 98 minus 93.31, and it looks like I have about 20 point, I'll just go two decimal places because the data here was to two decimal places. So it looks like 20.95. And what would the units on this be? It looks like it's quads. And I don't even know what quadrillion British thermal units are. I just know that more coal consumption is bad. All right, so we've got that. That's what we thought would happen in 1998. What actually happened in 1998? Our coal consumption was 21.66. So my guess, my estimation from my model was actually an underestimate of what actually happened, right? It underestimated the, the real figure in 1998. I would say it was pretty close, right? It wasn't too far off. If we wanna look at the difference between what happened and what I predicted, right? It was off by 0.71 quads, so that's not a terrible number to be off by, but I do want to point out that I underestimated. So I would say here, the figure, the actual figure, is close to what I predicted. I are, let me be super specific so that I'm not mincing words, right? The actual figure of 21.66 quads is close to the model's prediction of 20.95 quads. 
right? My model slightly underestimated the actual figure. So my model, or my logarithmic model, underestimated the actual figure of coal consumption. And what did we underestimate it by? It was about 0.71 quads. All right. All right, so that's all. I underestimated by a bit. Okay, great. All right, so moving along from there, I'm gonna scooch this up just so we can read the second question and I might scooch it up a little bit more if I want some space to answer it. But this says, if this trend continues, approximately when will the annual consumption reach 28 quads? All right, now if I'm looking at my data, right, you can't quite see the top, I've cut it off, but you see in, in 2008, I'm at 22.39. And this is increasing by a little bit, but it's not increasing by a ton. So when do I think I'm gonna hit 28 quads? Well, it took me 28 years just to grow seven quads, and I want to grow another seven. So I'm thinking it'll be like 2040, maybe, before, before I get there. All right, it's pretty far down the future. But let's see when that would happen. Now, I have my logarithmic model. All right, we know it's 24.92 LNT minus 93.31. And I want to see when is that equal to 28 quads because this 28 quads is a y value, or it is a function value. So I wanna set my equation, I wanna set 24.92 LNT minus 93.31. When is that equal to 28? All right, that's what I'm trying to solve here. When is fuel consumption equal to 28? What time, right? So I wanna solve for t. Well, if I wanna solve for t, I need to isolate that logarithmic term so let's go ahead and add 93.31 to both sides of this equation. So I'm gonna get 24.92 LNT. That's gonna be equal to, let's see, 93 plus 28 is 121.31. All right, again, I wanna isolate that logarithmic term. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 24.92. Let's see what we're working with. Now I do need my calculator. So I'm gonna go 121.31 and I'm gonna divide that by 24.92. It looks like I have about 4.868, all right? So we know T is, oh, excuse me, LNT is equal to four point, and it was, was it 868 or 686? It was 868, okay. All right, I have a logarithmic equation. I have a logarithm on one side of the equation, but not the other. So I need to transform this into its equivalent exponential equation. All right, now natural logs have base e, so if I use the circle equation, that's e to the 4.868 would be equal to t. And then I can calculate that number. So let's see what t is equal to. Now when it comes to exponential and logarithmic growth, when you round off, you might severely change your answer. So I'm gonna do e to my answer. If you don't remember how to call up your answer function, all right, it's over your negative symbol, but in blue. So if you hit second and the negative symbol, you'll call that up. And that just means that my calculator will remember all of those decimals. So I'm looking at about 130.06, right? So if we take a look at that, I, I wanna compare that. Let's see how different it was if I had just done the decimal round off, 868. Is it much different? Oh, not at all, okay. It really wasn't that much different, but sometimes they are. Sometimes exponential growth goes so fast that it really does make a difference how many decimals you're rounding off on. But this, this is not that example. All right, so, 
It says approximately when will this happen? And, and keep in mind, this is T equaling 130.06. And this is not the year 130. All right, that would be weird to say that at year 130, so about, I don't know, 2000 years ago, this happened. Let me scroll back down and remind you how we defined this variable. So we said T is the number of years after our base year of 1900. All right, so let me scooch this up again. So we have some room, oops, a little too far, some room to work with this. All right, I'm just going all over the place. There we go. All right, so then that would mean the year would be equal to my base year of 1900 plus 130.06. So if I add my base year to this answer, I'm looking at about 2030. All right, so that's about 2030. I'm, and I guess 2040, so I actually was a little off just to bank up feelings, but I knew it was pretty far after 2008. So annual coal consumption, or yeah, annual coal consumption will reach 28 quads around the year 2030. So let me write this, annual coal consumption will technically hit it um, pretty close to January because you've got 0.06 years here and if I converted that to months 0.06 years times 12 months in a year I'm still within the first month so somewhere around January of 2030 is when my annual coal consumption will hit that level of 28 quads. Alright so with that that rounds us out of this section so just to remind you of what we've accomplished, we've, we've talked about how to solve the two types of exponential equations. What do you do when the bases are the same? What do you do when the bases are different? We've talked about how to solve our two types of logarithmic equations. When you have logarithms just on one side of the equation and when you have logs on both sides of the equation. And then we looked at some applied problems. We did one with exponentials and one with logs. So as we move into the next section, we're really gonna focus heavy super heavy on getting exponential and logarithmic models. So when I say something like that, what I'm referring to is I'm going to give you a word problem and expect you to come up with this logarithmic model on your own. I'm going to give you data and we're going to plug that into our calculator and do some logarithmic regression. We'll do exponential regression also. So we're going to do all sorts of regression and modeling, at least by hand and with our calculator in the next couple of sections. All right, I'll see you in a bit. Bye.